Hey everyone, thanks for having me here. Um, excited to be part of the live coding workshop this week. Um, my presentation is going to be a little bit different because I don't um, do live coding in the sense that you guys do. <laughs> um, but I do work a lot with interfaces and um, I think a live coding as a way to showcase the behind the scenes uh, activity when you're working with computer music and digital audio. And a lot of what I do also um, has to do with exploring the behind the scenes of user interfaces and um, consumer facing technologies like the mouse, cursor, keyboard, input devices that we use to communicate with computers. So, um, oh yeah, I'm a PhD student at Brown University, as you can see up there. And there's my website and uh, email if you want to contact me later. Um, so just a bit of background about myself. I'm a percussionist and composer by training um, and multimedia artist. Um, and yeah, so a lot of my work tries to integrate the performative aspect of being a percussionist and uh, performing on stage with uh, the music technology side of things. So also bringing that to the forefront and highlighting the technology that's involved in the pieces. Um, and a lot of the work that I make is done in a language called Max, which is what you see up here. And I don't think we've seen very much Max this workshop, so I'll, I'll just briefly go over a couple things. Um, this one is just, um, this is a Max patch actually here. So these are different objects that you can have inside of Max. This one's a, um, a sine wave oscillator set to a frequency of 0.1 hertz, and then you can easily in Max, click on objects and change them to whatever frequency um, you want. You can also have inputs. So right now it's at 100 hertz, flashing much faster. Um, it's pretty easy to create things on the fly and sort of sketch projects out in Max. This um, little scene right here has two sine wave oscillators with these number floating point number boxes that you can plug into different objects in Max and you can set the frequency here. And this is a like a user interface object that Max, you know, makes it really easy to manipulate things with your computer's interface. So here I'm just bringing the volume up and I can change the frequency of the different Right. So, things that you might type out in a line of code in something like Super Collider or Chuck, you can also in Max do with um, your interface devices. Having said that, there are also ways to um, use text-based code editing inside of Max. So for example, you can do sample-based or sample-accurate editing in Max with the gen object. Um, and basically inside of it, you can connect different objects as you would in a normal Max patch. And as well, or in addition to that, you have this code box that allows you to type out um, whatever your code might be in a more super collider or chuck-like format and then integrate that into a larger framework of the patch that you're working on. And from um, a video and graphic standpoint, you have the ability to work with shaders. Oh, <laughs> did Max crash? Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying, you have the ability to work with um, shaders as well for doing graphics processing in Max. Um, and you can edit shaders directly and load them into Max using objects like jit.gl.slab. Um, again, giving you that text-based code editor within the framework of Max. Um, great. And so the piece that I'm about talking about today is called On Off, and it was written all in Max, and it was written for uh, a quartet of uh, two pianists and two percussionists. Um, and it's an experiment in, you know, reimagining consumer-facing interfaces or just technological interfaces in general as sites for creative exploration. Um, so instead of just 
the very simple mapping um, that you see, you know, when you use a mouse on your computer or press a key, thinking about ways to take that device, that interface, and turn it into something that is more performative. Um, and so this piece is a rules-based game in which two competing teams of players try to direct the movement of a cursor on screen. And they're basically trying to um, get the mouse cursor over to an on-screen switch and flip it. So one team is trying to flip the switch, one team is trying to prevent the other team from flipping the switch. And that's the basically the rules of the, the game. And the music that comes out of it is an emergent property of the game itself. So that's sort of the compositional idea behind the piece. Um, oh, and I'll just show you the score quickly before I play the video. So each player gets a score that looks like this. Um, you get a pitch set for each section. Um, this, is so, this is player one score, and they're controlling the left-right movement of the cursor. So each player on each team gets control of one axis. So this player is controlling left-right. In the first section, they have 60 seconds using this pitch set to try to move the cursor as close as they can to the switch on screen. And then they have a pause of 45 seconds while the other team has a turn and it switches off like that until the end where everyone gets to try to flip the, the switch. Um, and so there's a specific um, score for each player. So I'll, I'll play this um, recording here. And then afterwards, I'll do a, a demo of an adaptation of the piece with, with Molly, who's here.
So I, I flipped the switch at the end because it didn't work. But so that's the thing. It's a game piece. So you never know how it's going to turn out because um, it's live. But just to show you that they can flip the switch, <laughs> that it does work if they make it. I'll play this short excerpt from rehearsal. <laughs> So that's on off. And um, I mean, the simple, the system that is underneath all of that for pitch tracking is pretty simple. Um, but I thought I might just demonstrate it here. It's all built in Max. And is this big enough to see, or should I make it bigger? OK. Um, so this is sort of the, the pitch tracking system in isolation. Um, and oh, I don't want this going. Um, what it does is it takes an input from the microphone uh, into this um, object called F0, which does pitch tracking. It gives you the current amplitude and uh, pitch for each onset. You can set the threshold for onsets based on differences in frequencies and differences in amplitude from note to note. Um, and then once it detects an onset, you can also give it you know, what instrument you're tracking, um, so for a range of frequencies. But once you have um, an input, into the system, um, it gets assigned to either, depending on the player's part, left-right movement or up-down movement for the cursor. In here is where the system evaluates the two pitches, the two most recent pitches that have been detected as onsets, and it looks at um, the difference between them. Sorry, three. You need to play at least three notes for it to evaluate whether it's going left or right. And that's in order to determine intentionality and to account for the range of the instrument. If it was just one note following the other, then you would never really be able to move because you need to like go back down an octave at some point to start playing up again. So this system allows you to um, switch down octaves and play another ascending passage if you want to move right or up the whole way. Um, so just to quickly demo this. Um. Is it working? Oh. 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 always happens when you're presenting. Um. Oh. oh, I know what's going on. does work. <laughs> well, maybe I'll skip the demo, because I, clearly I forgot to include something. But hopefully it works in the actual piece that you'll see next. OK. 
So yeah, well, when this is working, um, what happens is that the each one of these gives a um, message to no, okay, um, to this system down here, which creates messages based on pitch um, that translates it into like pixel distance. So the greater the interval between consecutive pitches played, the more pixels the cursor will move in the given direction. So, and that gets packed into uh, a message here that goes out to the computer's um, interface that handles keyboard and mouse input. And that's how the cursor gets moved around. Now, um, <laughs> since uh, I couldn't bring the four players from Yarnwire here to Rio to play the, um, the, the piece on off, I've created an adapted version, um, and which Molly has uh, agreed to play on. So we're going to perform this new, as yet, uh, untitled piece. So hope you enjoy. Thank you. 